so uh, please let me introduce you Mr. František Algoldor Apfelbeck. František is a biotechnologist who arrived from South Korea and uh, He's actually a food and beverage hacker and he travels around the world and learns and mostly teaches about fermentation. And today he would like to introduce you his concept that he would like to develop next year in hacker spaces around Europe. And his vision is to implement food hacking into hack communities and to move this topic from big corporates to open source. Please welcome the fermentation master, František. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, I will go through the presentation starting a bit about my personal history, after what I have been up to before I joined the hacker movement, when I joined the hacker movement, and uh, later on we will talk about the current state and the future vision, which is for me today the main thing, what I'm after. You can see the Experimental Fermentation Center Network, which is quite a long name. Uh, I like to call it Chihiro. It's a project which I'm talking, thinking uh, about for a good five years or so. Uh, and partly doing. Uh, now I am thinking about really uh, trying to move to the next stage to make it happen as a major thing uh, in my life. Uh, as said, uh, František, Apfelbeck, Algor in the computer world, uh, food hacking base and dancing drops uh, groups which are mostly now kind of supporting uh, my activities and through which I work. You can see the food hacking base logo and you can see the uh, page two, my one. Now, next slide, congratulations. Okay, so personal introduction. Uh, who am I and where I'm coming from? <clears throat> uh, I am from Czech Republic. I have been studying biotechnology, molecular biology, and related subjects on different universities in Czech, Ireland, Holland. Uh, I decided to leave academic world some time ago, and I become interested during my work travels into the field of fermentation, which I enjoy very much and which I want to continue to do. Uh, you can see that uh, basically the hacker movement, which I entered through the noise bridge in San Francisco, was very inspirational for me. Uh, I have been involved there with uh, food, beverage and drink uh, experimentation, and later on promoted in a different places. Uh, I believe that bringing the ancient knowledge of the food uh, and drink productions with today's science, which I'm, where I'm coming from, and technology. It's something what is worth of doing, and I want to help to promote it. So, promotion, how does it work? Uh, you can see the Food Hacking Base. Food Hacking Base is project which started around 2011 uh, with Nick Farr. Uh, we have been uh, part of his hackers on a plane on the last uh, camp. And uh, basically, we later came independent. Uh, we are a group of people from all around the world who basically love to play with the food, drinks, and experiment. Uh, we believe that all these things are cool and they should be part of the hacker movement. Uh, there are many reasons for that. Uh, one of them, uh, as a, I don't want to say opposition, but alternative to the big corporate world, uh, for example. Uh, our idea is to support creation of the subgroups and groups within the hackerspaces all around the world and come together on a big international events where we can exchange ideas, you know, get basic kind of together and present what we do and get more people in, supporting basically the creation of the community, strengthening the binds in the hackerspaces and uh, promoting this way the movement in the food, bio, uh, drink hacking. Uh, international networking is really important. Uh, 
this year, for example, here at the camp, we have a probiotic drink ever pro everywhere project where we try to uh, brew around 200 liters of probiotic drinks, sharing them uh, with the people around, bringing them from different hackerspaces from Hamburg to Czech Republic from South Korea and uh, sharing the experience. Another one, uh, which, for example, I also got uh, lots of help from uh, the Teching in Holland and Art Marinsen was the experiment incubator, where we finally have the PCB version of our control, which will make our fermentation more easy and fun, so we can control temperature when we like, etc. So things like that we do with Hurricane Base, and we promote it further, trying to get the people in the hackerspaces to realize it is possible, it is doable, you can have a kitchen, you can have a small bio lab, and your hackerspace will not go out in the flame, at least not most of the time. Generally, it's a wet shower when you over-ferment. So if you want to see it in reality here on the cam, visit Hurricane Base, which is next to the Millie Base. Uh, that's the best way, I think, to go. Now, uh, dancing drops. What is dancing drops? Chong Chong Mo. That's a group which we have in South Korea. Uh, basically, me and my girlfriend Unha started, you know, continuing with the fermentation in Korea. I'm there for nearly four years. And I have to say that being in Korea for four years in Jeju Island was very interesting. But uh, due to a variety of difficulties, I am ready to wrap up the experience and move back to Europe. Uh, that's basically a big part of this presentation, what I want to do here. Anyway, uh, we have been into the doing what I am going to talk about, bringing community together, you know, doing workshops and learning, giving the experience to the people for over three years there. And I have done it in different groups, which I will mention later on. And it was a great testing ground. So it's not that like, you know, now I'm coming and I want to do a project uh, which I have never touched, you know. No, I have experience which kind of was uh, hardly gained and I want to now you know, kind of you know, turn it to the gold. Uh, one thing which I definitely realized, uh, having small biolab uh, production facility, that would be the main one because we do a bit of business. We have a restaurant there, small one, it's a business point, and now a hacker's residency. So if you are around, you can come and you can crash or stay for a few weeks or months after agreement to learn something from us. Now the options are really wide. What I realize is that uh, running a place like that, especially if you are partly relying on production, it's an everyday activity. You cannot leave, for example, for a longer period of time. So compared to the educational and experimental, having part of the project production, it's a bit difficult. I'm mentioning that here a bit out of line because I will mention it several times and it's important. Uh, of course, at the end, you see covering living expenses. Uh, most of you in the hack spaces are used that you have to get your job, you have to get the money, and after that you can play in the hack spaces. Some people already have the job which I like and they want to do it from the hacker spaces. Uh, that's basically the way which I want to go. I want to invest my time and energy in something what I like and what I believe in and I want to cover my living. So this project is not about me being on the street you know, without no resources, which was true for many years, but in this case it's something to have resources to do what I like the way as I believe. Now. Uh, experimentation or fermentation experimental centers, what is it? Uh, it's a wide, wide, you know, topic. I will go through it quickly. They are ancient. This is not a new thing. Uh, since we are around and run around with, you know, fermenting meat maybe 20,000 years ago from making the bread in ancient Egypt, you know, or beer, you know, in Mesopotamia, etc. There were always places where people gathered around something what they like. Fermentation are not excluded. More recent uh, development in Europe, you, you know, I'm sure that Belgium or other countries have monasteries from 11th, 12th centuries, they are brewing. Amazing example, I think, of community of people coming together, doing the chores, you know, on a daily basis, uh, accumulating knowledge, experimenting with the great, you know, results, you know, in brews of alcoholic, non-alcoholic stuff, and sharing the knowledge, writing it down for the next centuries. Uh, getting their resources partly by sustainability of the monastery and partly also through the kind of crowdsourcing or grants from the local feudal lord or the church. I think that's a nice example and also again mentioning 
it's not a new thing on the world. Now, there are more kind of things happening these days to a degree. You have business, non-profit, for-profit kind of, you know, uh, lens where you can do it. Uh, I have to say, I will mention probably the academy because that's my background. Um, I'll focus on academy. Academy has happened uh, concerning the fermentation arts and natural science uh, arts uh, around, uh, you know, let's say 1900s, uh, 1900, you know, late 1900th century, 1980, whatever, sorry, uh, 1880 and so, and so on. Uh, you got uh, people who are interested in the subject. Uh, they got the grants, uh, they got infrastructure, they got equipment, uh, they get great knowledge uh, through studying the schools. Uh, so it's a nice setup from this point of view. On the other hand, if you want to do something on academy, you have to be aware of the hierarchical infrastructure. You have to be aware of uh, maybe 10 years, at least I would say, of career involvement. And uh, you realize that there are some things which may take quite a bit to develop. Uh, it's basically really hard to get in, to get what you want, and you still have to be successful to be able to do so. Otherwise, you get into some project which you don't even want to be. Now, uh, other thing, of course, is that uh, what I don't like for so much about the academy, there is a lot of applied, actually but generally it's for some uh, larger style of production, corporation base, and so on. I don't like that. I like small and medium production, so something that I didn't enjoy. Now, uh, in this way, I was also very impressed by the hacker movement, because when I came to Noise Bridge, I have seen a place where you could come, do stuff, and share it, enjoy it, and you would actually get a lot of resources for your thing as long as they were community-based and shared by the community, which I love. So no problem for me. I like that. Uh, basically, I like the op openness and the flexibility. So that's something that really attracted me. And I have realized that food and drink kind of biohacking is something what is not done actually in hacker spaces too much. And I really believe uh, that it would be fun from what I have seen already, there were kind of interest, and it's also important. So, now, if we talk about what I'm actually, what I'm talking about, experimental fermentation center, uh, you have a physical place. Physical place is important. Uh, you would have there things like experimental kitchen, you can call it like that, or experimental lab, uh, where you have basic equipment for preparing the food for your membership dinners, or member dinners, which definitely give you some cash and also kind of, you know, uh, happy faces for your future projects in your community. You bring people together. You will have some, uh, educational venue. That's workshop place. Uh, the workshop place, uh, can be shared, especially if it's been adjusted with the usual group. So that's another thing which definitely I uh, recommend. Uh, virtual place, uh, you know it from your space. You have some wiki pages, you have uh, IRC channels, you know, you have, uh, you know, mailing list. So you are out there, you get your things documented, and you put it out for others to share. Uh, I like community run and community share. So I like the model, how the hackerspaces are run, and I think uh, it'd be really nice to use it also for this basic approach, uh, where, you know, for me, most of these kind of, you know, fermentation centers, you know, or groups, you know, subgroups, should be a part of the larger hackerspaces. You know, there may be some independent kind of meaning, especially topical hackerspaces, which I would like to build, but most of them would be part of all the traditional hackerspaces like Noise Bridge, you know, you know, Progress Bar, you know, Brimlap, you know, many others. And it's happening, which is nice. Now, uh, you should definitely think about if you want to create some kitchen corner where you can ferment beer or make a cheese or something like that, or grow mushrooms, which are glowing in the dark, uh, respect your uh, uh, fellow members. Uh, I have seen a few laptops being kind of put out of service by Exploni Kombucha. Uh, smelly two-year-old cheese, which you really love, may not be exactly the thing for the guy sitting next to you. So respect to the community is very important because uh, bringing the community it's actually one of the gifts of making food and drinks and sharing it. So you should try not to 
take it apart, but bring it through this. So respect and respect the mother. You know, whatever you do, you should look, I think consider is it what you do okay or it can can it cause the closure of the hacker space? Like you know, it's nice to play with the GMO uh, for some people, but uh, to do it properly and on the lines, you actually need a lot of things to know, and you may get in trouble if you don't. Now, next one. So I do believe that uh, doing the food drink biohacking together is fun and it's possible. Uh, I have seen uh, this being happening quite often. Uh, appearance of the uh, hacker spaces of this type around the world are frequent and uh, through my work in Tastebridge, uh, which is sort of Nasebridge, we did many events and uh, got lots of people in. Uh, we did the same with Onan Van Brewmasters in uh, Galway. Uh, dancing drops I described now. And there uh, are, for example, Hacteria, which I have seen, I am not involved, you know, happening in the former Yugoslavia. Uh, so things are moving on. You know, I'm only in it for, for over five years and I see it happening. Uh, I believe that the experimental centers should be innovative. They should bring really kind of, you know, new things, so a bit of research definitely in. They should collaborate with bigger places like academia because you will be not able to do, at least now, some deep research. You need to collaborate. Uh, educational classes like, you know, workshops as you do, you know, healthcare spaces is great, uh, which can lead later on to the programs, set it together uh, or put together from the workshop, no problem. Plus, you know, of course, if the people are doing that, I don't see a problem why they should not be able to get some living costs covered by that. Uh, applied, I love applied. So basically getting these things done uh, in a way that it has a significance in the real world is really important. So that's something what I'm really after, and I would love to see some pilot production at least, or at least collaboration. Now. Binding hacking community together around the table, you know, on the membership meeting I already mentioned, and extend to each other, I think it's quite self-planning. Now, structure. Uh, I was kind of making a joke of easy to clean surfaces, etc. Air conditioning, that's secondary. You know, you, we can talk about it later on. There are lots of things of this type. Place specificity, it's important. Uh, is it just one hacker space or is it kind of, you know, happening in all around? I prefer the way when you can start you take the lead and people join and different hackerspaces are joining in and collaborating. Uh, so rather multi -up, multiple up startup. Uh, current, current recommendations are happening now. Uh, what should be in? Community-based, open source, I said. Uh, documentation friendly, you should put it out when you do it. Uh, experiment venue in, definitely educational venue in. Uh, it's nice to have some storage in the corner if you want to do this, because otherwise you are out of steam and cleaning. Uh, sad, but important. Uh, residency would be great, but uh, may take some time and money. And small-scale production collaboration mentioned, difficult for me, important, but not maybe so much for you. Now, what I'm after, pilot model development. I want to create a concept, basically, then within six, seven years, I can apply. Uh, I have experience, which I can show, both are kind of practical, and now I am up to getting resources to make it happen. I would like to make it happen in Europe. Uh, what I need is time and to prepare. So this presentation part is my call for people to realize that I'm up to that and I would like to start next year to make it happen. So what do I need? My main project is to establish community which is open to create uh, things around the food, drink, share it, experiment, learn. And hopefully with practical appliances to the local community around and also internationally. It should be sustainable financially and this model which will be built will be shared farther. Uh, international collaboration, it's key, so definitely in. Now, first phase. Within the first year, I need to secure a physical location. I need to specify the program, what is going to be done in the next several years, because it's up to a six-year project. I need to get resources sorted, at least partly, for the first two to three years. Uh, academic shielding and collaboration would be great. I'm absolutely happy to do it part as a PhD program, but not as a main thing, just to get me a bit more organized. Uh, newsletters, portals, you know that stuff kind of, you know, if you want to do something structurally, you have to keep it going. And community, 
repetitiveness helps. This first year, I can imagine living costs for me sitting on the ass, it's around 20,000 euros, uh, and I can be nearly anywhere. Hopefully less, but I have to be realistic. Now, what I want to say, I already basically kind of mentioned the first phase, uh, participation on the main events, I need to travel a bit, so some intercontinental, intercontinental kind of travels. Uh, hackerspace will be most likely in Europe. This is actually kind of 100% close to. Uh, working life expenses covered. 1,200 at least you know, per month is clear, 20,000 in the year. Uh, ways of sourcing, any what I get, uh, which is ethically okay. I will prefer no commercial corporations, big corporations, and focus on crowdsourcing, maybe some patron who I believe and who I like, and other types of support. Now, picture of Hurricane Base at CCC here, just that you have a picture in the presentation. I definitely don't have too much. I like black and green. Uh, second phase, uh, how much time do I have? Am I in minus? Seven minutes? Okay, well, I will cut it down a little bit on the questions, okay? <laughs> I still need a bit of time for this. Uh, basically, next phase, the second phase, of course, it's a bit more unclear because I need that year to prepare it. I need a time. But uh, within the next, uh, next phase is setting up the experimental venue and educational venue. That means acquiring and building up the physical place. That's crucial. Uh, starting up experimenting and workshops, starting to build up the community within these places. All of that should be happening within the second year, basically, of the project. Uh, building pilot scale production would be great, but it may be postponed uh, or collaborated with. Uh, testing infrastructure, running it, you know, it has to be done. So, kind of, you know, that's all part of these things. Uh, of course, the hacker residency is something what I would like to have in because of collaboration, but I would like to start to check within the next second year on that and academic report handing in. Uh, I can imagine the very first year another 20,000 personal expenses and 10 to 20,000 running costs. You know the cost of the hacker spaces. So if you are independent from the beginning, it will cost money. If you are within a hacker space, it will be cheaper. So we'll see. And of course, building cost. That will be easily five to 25,000 for things which you need to do this. Uh, total 45,000, 60,000 a year. I think that's doable. Uh, this is the second year. So we have first, second year, second year. Uh, sources again, main crowdsourcing campaign and after basically grants, patron, etc. Second phase results. Things are basically running. We are set, we are doing things, we are promoting within the location. No time to travel too much out of the location for the first two years of running really yet. Uh, third phase, uh, facilities are really done. You are in this moment kind of having two years to do it. So first two years, basically preparation, now two to three years, doing the stuff to get information, get all the important info out, uh, starting to collaborate internationally, starting to travel a bit more. Uh, you have to get you know, research and things done. And increasing, of course, the self-dependency. So you are starting to increase your profit or whatever ways you are getting resources will be combined. So you do not rely completely on one source or something external. That's crucial. Uh, yield budget, I think, with just 35, 50,000, that's something what, you know, with all the kind of, you know, stuff, it's kind of necessity. Now, sustainable development, this is uh, the final phase when you finish up, basically. This is your kind of conclusion summary. You get uh, your sustainable model of how to do this. You put it on the paper, you put it electronically out, uh, and you share it. Uh, I think that this should be done uh, without 40, 60,000 a year, hopefully within one to two years. Uh, this money at that time should be generated by the project. So, you know, the project should be fully sufficient in that time, in that, let's say, last fifth, sixth year, fourth, fifth, sixth year, depending. Uh, budget should be covered, things should be clean, and the place should be operational without, well, let's say, with external influence, but in a proper way. Now, future goals should be set because the project of this type is completed and should be exported out. Uh, this is just a quick 
thing to see everything you know, in the line. You can see, if I click once more, this will take around six years. I want to start next year, 2016, 2021. I would like to have it done as really my main project. I estimate between 200 to 250,000 euro it will cost. It may be lower if I get a really good deal, which this is why I'm actually here to promote and get some collaboration. But in reality, the cost will be around this at least. Who is going to cover it? I have to find out, but this will be the cost. Now, project total benefit that's for us to see in the years to come. And I hope that I will be able to report on success within the next years on congresses and conferences like that. Sorry for flying through that quite quickly, but I got a bit out of the time, so I had to focus. Now, the last slide, uh, the thanks slide, uh, is just with info for you to see where to contact me and on the online world, you know, where to check with me. Uh, my web pages are there, franchiseupfabay.org. Uh, so are the Furikim based pages. And I would like to thank Dancing Drops, Furikim based community to be supportive in the last years and the Herms uh, uh, Corporation, not sorry, uh, Foundation, uh, which uh, helped me to come here uh, paying actually for my flight tickets. So I do enjoy that uh, because otherwise I would be not here, I will be not giving the presentation. So please spread the word, uh, check this presentation, give it to someone who is interested or who may be interested. And the next year, I hope to start this to make it happen here, somewhere in Europe, and I'm looking for places and people who would like to be involved and make this happen and later on spread it around the world in your hackerspaces or independent kind of topical hackerspaces. That's all. I am afraid I may not have time for the questions we will see in a moment. I just would like to thank you and see you soon on the 32 C3. Thanks. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. And uh, do we have someone who has a question that want to ask very quickly? Okay, so uh, you are welcome to come to the food hacking place. Food hacking base, yes. Food hacking base next to the millibase. Just pop in, see the concept, you know, we'll be there. We have been probably there anyway. Yep. Okay, thank you very much and uh, have a nice evening. Don't forget to drink water. Get ready for some weather forecast with storm or wind that might come and keep all the other announcements and uh, yeah have a very nice camp and enjoy have a nice evening thank you